Hello, everyone. Um, welcome for this special Q&A session about the new program that we are launching with uh, Doctors Without Borders Foundation on the antibiogo application that they are currently developing. Um, I'm joined by uh, Nada Malou uh, and Louis Laroche from the MSF Foundation. And uh, they are going to uh, tell us more about what they are doing regarding uh, antibiotic resistance and their fight uh, on the field. And, uh, and then we're going to uh, introduce more um, this challenge and what we expect also from the drug oil community and how we can help the MSF Foundation have a better impact on the field uh, and to fight antibiotic resistance. Um, so first of all, uh, okay, let me share my screen. Um, where is it? Here. Oops. Is it not working? Here. Um, so here is um, our first event for this new program. And uh, we are extremely proud to be partnering with MSS Foundation. Um, MSS Foundation is going to be introduced by Nada Ruketeter. Um, and uh, we're going to go through several steps as I was, uh, as I was saying. Uh, but um, so this partnership happened actually very recently. Uh, and uh, it was, uh, it was Clara Nordan, who is uh, the, the head of the MSM Foundation, who contacted us at Drogo and uh, with NADA. And they had this need regarding uh, the improvement of one of their algorithm that is helping lab technicians in the field uh, where they are working to analyze uh, what we call antibiotic susceptibility tests, uh, which is uh, essential uh, when you want to treat, uh, for example, patients or animals in order to understand what kind of uh, resistance you, the microbes you want to treat have. Um, and um, and they, uh, they have been working on this uh, uh, application for several years now, and Nada is going to tell more about it. Um, but they have one key element, which is uh, the algorithm, uh, the machine learning algorithm that is behind uh, analyzing the pictures that needs more training. And as uh, more data is basically fed to the algorithm, this algorithm becomes more efficient. And so it's able actually to perform better. Um, so we are here actually to help the MSS Foundation to gather more data uh, to make sure that um, they have um, all the right images that, can, that we can fed to the algorithm regarding the different kind of antibiotics that they are going to analyze uh, to make uh, antibiotic susceptibility tests for. Um, and um, there are many antibiotics and then in many pictures per antibiotics. And so it looks like it's a great, um, in order to address this problem, uh, instead of just doing it in a very, uh, like in a single lab, which is going to take you know, forever, uh, maybe we could actually call, you know, um, to, to, the, to, make a, to, to give a call to the community and say, hey, who is it would be interested in giving a bit of their time you know, doing something they've already been doing, uh, basic microbiology uh, procedures, um, and producing results that are going to be useful to fight antibiotic resistance uh, with a great partner, which is MSF Foundation, who has been, you know, MSF has been proving, um, they have a track record, which is amazing. Um, so it's a great opportunity also to prove uh, the importance to connect um, NGOs who are working on the field and uh, you know, volunteers and contributors who have skills and expertise and are willing actually to provide them uh, to help the impact of such NGOs. Um, so we are very proud uh, to create these partnerships. And, uh, and uh, so I cannot wait actually to see uh, what the community is going to be able to produce. And, uh, and so we're, now we're going to go into the different steps that you will have to, uh, to, um, to follow. But, but, before that, uh, Nada is going to tell you more about the antibiogo application they've been working on so far. Nada? Yes. Thank you, Thomas. Thank you very much for the introduction. And yeah, thank you very much for this great collaboration. Did, as you said, uh, it's, uh, it's a very long collaboration, uh, but uh, everything went uh, quite quickly and it, it's really great for us because. We are in need of um, those pictures in order to improve um, the algorithm, as you explained, and I'm going to give more uh, details. And it's, it's quite challenging, especially when we work in low income countries, to succeed to um, 
to collect those data without disturbing uh, the routine activity. So maybe to start, I'm going to just give um, an overview of uh, what is MSF Foundation. But for that, I need to present MSF. Um, so um, MSF, Médecins sans frontières, or Doctors Without Borders. So we are medical, humanitarian, and transnational and non-governmental organization. We intervene in more than 70 countries. Um, it can be for um, response to um, epidemics and outbreaks, like Ebola outbreaks, or even um, for natural catastrophe, or just uh, for um, um, to reinforce some health system. Um, that are difficulties to um, respond to the medical needs of the population. We are mainly focusing on pediatric population um, and also mother and, and, and child uh, health. Uh, it can be HIV, TB. Um, anyway, and so um, the MSF Foundation is part of the satellite of, uh, of MSF. And the objective of the MSF Foundation is really to support um, the, the medical and the operation mission of, uh, of MSF or Dr. Without Borders uh, in order to develop or adapt existing tools to the constraints and to the needs of the countries and um, the context where we are. Uh, so that's MSF Foundation. And that's how this uh, crazy adventure started a few years ago, four years ago, uh, thanks to uh, Clara Norton, the director of the MSF Foundation. And maybe I use uh, just the introduction to introduce the team. Uh, uh, as you said, uh, Thomas, we have uh, with us Louis Laroche, but we have also uh, Soria, who is part of, uh, of the team. So um, it's a small team, uh, but uh, we are trying to do our best to make these uh, tools uh, available on the market. So maybe I can share my screen. I'm really try, I'm trying, I'm going to try to do not lose too much time. Um, and so um, please don't hesitate to tell me if um, the information that I am sharing with you are not as relevant as that, uh, knowing that you are all um, scientific. Um, do you see my screen? Yeah? Yes, yes. Okay, great. So today it's not a secret. I hope that it's not a secret for all of you that the antimicrobial resistance is one of the major public health threats. Um, we know that uh, if we don't act today, um, we are going to uh, end up with 10 million deaths attributable to antimicrobial resistance every year by 2050. And this was an estimation in 2014. So um, we think that with the COVID pandemic, the situation is going to be worsening. Um, as you can see on the map, um, the majority of the deaths are going to be in the African and the Asian continent. And the problem of antimicrobial resistance, the difficulties in fact of antimicrobial resistance is that it's um, it's a public health with different drivers. So we need different solutions and we need a multidisciplinary approach. Um, today and um, and specific specifically on this topic, we are focusing on the access to diagnostic. Uh, but of course, MSF as a medical organi organization is managed and other um, other pillar of um, this multidisciplinary approach. So uh, basically, it started with the uh, MSF experience in this field, mainly in a war wounded context in the Middle East and in Western Africa, treating pediatric population arriving with uh, severe infections, um, life threatening infections, um, and there was no diagnostic tools and no adaptive treatment to those populations. So we started implementing microbiology labs. Um, so today we have around between 11 and 14 microbiology labs. Some of them are 100% MSF. Other are private or public, but supported by MSF, uh, either by training or supply or mentorship, and others are external. Um, very quickly, what is an AST? Again, I'm not going to answer in details, but uh, please ask all your questions during the QA session. So the idea is to put uh, a bacteria. Once you know which bacteria uh, is um, uh, growing in your samples. Okay, if we come back to the beginning, you are sick, you have fever, we need to take the samples in order to see if it's a bacterial or a viral infection. Once we know it's a bacterial infection in the lab, then we need to identify the bacteria. That's fine, we identify the bacteria. 
the last step, which is the most important for the clinician, is to which antibiotic bacteria is sensitive and to which antibiotic is bacteria is resistant. So we do the antibiotic. Huh? So basically, it's just a petri dish where you put your bacteria and you put them in contact with antibiotic, two antibiotic groups. Then you incubate this for a few hours and you read the results. So basically, the result is the size of the inhibition zone. As you can see on the picture, uh, when where there is nothing, it means that the bacteria did not grow. It means that the antibiotic is effective because it is killing the bacteria around. Here, when you see 12 millimeters, you see that hmm, it's th there is no uh, bacteria around, but very quickly we, we see the bacteria. So it's unclear if it is resistant or intermediate because it's another category. That's an antibiotic. But this is a simple way to interpret an antibiotic. Huh? The most complicated is all those rules that exist because what is happening in the lab and the results that you see in the lab is not always what you see uh, in your patient and in vivo. Give you an example of this antibiotic. Huh? You see this antibiotic, it seems that the bacteria is sensitive because there is no growth around it. This one, it seems that it's resistant because there is no growth, but very quickly you see the bacteria around. In fact, one of the rules say that if this antibiotic is resistant, even if this one that you see sensitive in the lab is, is sensitive in the lab, in fact, on the patient, we know that it's not going to work. This is what we call interpretative reading of antibiotic arm. And that's how the idea of antibiotic came, because for this step, you need clinical microbiologists. And those human resources are not available in low and income countries, except at high level of the health pyramid, like in the capital, kitchen hospital but not where the, the, the need is the most important. So Antibiogo is a free and open source and offline um, Android um, app that, is, that supports the non-expert laboratory technician or even like naive microbiologists who have not a lot of experience um, in uh, doing and interpreting ASD. Um, it will help uh, those human resources to make the interpretation of the ASD in order to ensure that the results that we give back to the clinician is accurate and that we are going to treat our patient in. Is my screen? Yes. Okay, so I'm not going to go through all the demo, but okay, we'll start with this. So, okay, uh, antibiotic works like this. It's the first screen you enter the information about the test, the ACID for ACID for antimicrobial sensitivity testing, then the sample type, the bacteria. It's very important because the rules depend on the type of bacteria, population, and then your name. Next step, and it's one, the first component of the app is what we call the image analysis or image processing. And that's exactly where we are, we need your help, and, and we, we cannot, in fact, move more than what we did uh, today uh, without uh, your support. So I will show you how it works. So here, the app identifies the petri dish and zoom on the petri dish. Okay, this is the first step. The second step, the app is up analyzing the petri dish and it identifies the location of each antibiotic disease, and it asks you to confirm the name of each antibiotic disease. It's the problem is that if, if the name were uh, clearly written on the antibiotic disease, it, it would make the, the task easier. But the problem is that from a brand to another, the, the three letters sometimes are different uh, and, and the typology is different. So for the moment, we trained and for the proof of concept, we trained the app. Uh, for the image processing to identify the name of antibiotic on one brand. Now that we know that it works, we need more pictures of more brand of antibiotic in order to be able to have an app that can be widely. So it identified your antibiotics and also what we call the inhibition zone. Instead of measuring this manually, the app can suggest for you uh, the inhibition zone. And then, of course, you can adjust if you don't agree with um, the, the app measurement. Okay, well, I'm not going to do it for all the antibiotics, so running out of time, but basically it, do it, for, it does it for all the antibiotics. Okay. 
Okay, that's it. Great. All our antibiotics are identified in the petri dish, and the name was correctly identified. Next step is what we call the expert system. It's the second component, and it's maybe one of the most important ones because it's thousands of rules that normally a microbiologist uh, knows and acquires during his training. But uh, here they are summarized um, in an, an expert system. And this expert system will guide you in order to identify some, for example, specific resistance mechanisms. Here is a picture where you see that there is a weird shape. This weird shape is means something. This means that there is a specific resistance type. And the app is going to guide you by asking questions. If you see synergy, for example, here the name is synergy, but it can be antagonist for another antibiotic, or it can be another shape for other antibiotic. Okay, so your answer. And if you don't know what is synergy, then you can look to the picture. Okay, this is a synergy, that's fine. This is not a synergy. Okay, so then you confirm if you see or you don't see. And then the app is going to process the result. This is the last, uh, almost the last screen. You can still change your results here. And then if you are okay, if you, you consider that everything is fine in terms of inhibition zone, antibiotic screening to detect it, then you can just um, uh, um, prepare your, your results. So the results are like this with uh, uh, some information about the uh, specific resistance mechanism and then list of antibiotics. And I'm not going to enter in other details. But basically, it's this. Then you can send your results to the clinician by email, by um, printing, by and you can send them also to microbiologists if you need some validation. In the results, you can have some comments about a resistance mechanism and also some comments about treatment, like, oh, please avoid using this antibiotic for a urinary tract infection. You need to use it for another type of infection. And so the primary user, the primary target of this app is the laboratory technician, but at the end, we want also to support the clinician to use these results. So that's where we are. Uh, today, uh, Antibiobo, uh, the app exists and it works. Um, again, it was a proof of concept and, and now we are really moving to something bigger that we can uh, implement in a large number of uh, countries and large number of sites. Uh, you need to understand also that this app is uh, considered as a medical device. So it's, in terms of regulation, it's, it's quite strict, but also in terms of how do we validate the performances of this app. And so today we are evaluating the clinical performance of this app in three countries, in um, Jordan, in Amman, in uh, Mali, inshallah, and in, in Senegal. And the idea would, would be for us to uh, have the clinical performance of the app compared to uh, what a microbiology team. So it's very funny to, to have uh, the gold standard that being a human being, it, 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 uh, it's very interesting. Uh, that's where we are, and that's why we, we need your help, because today we can use this app only in laboratories that can uh, that have access to this specific kind of antibiotic. But if we succeed to have five, six, 10, 20 uh, uh, brand, other brand of antibiotics, then we are sure that we are going to cover um, the majority of the countries and the majority of, of, of the, the area. Um, I say 20 brand of antibiotics. We know that some of them are more important than others and more used than others. And that's why during our challenge, we focus on uh, brand of antibiotics because usually that's what we find in uh, low and middle income countries, uh, mainly in Western Africa. In, in, um, uh, voila. This is Antibiobo's story, and uh, I'd be very happy to answer all your questions. And we are really looking forward uh, to see how this challenge is going to be, because for us, it's uh, it's just, uh, I think, the beginning of a new era. Uh, if we can have a community working with us uh, on Antibiobo. So the, the pictures of the Antibiobo, this is the first step, that there will be a lot of other uh, approach, projects, and challenges that we can um, um, build together, hopefully. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nada, um, for this beautiful story. Uh, this is just the beginning, as you said. Um, now we're going to go through the, the different steps that, uh, that participants are required to take in order to be able to participate. So I'm going to, um, to share um, my screen again. So don't hesitate while I'm, you know, we are going through those different steps. 
to actually raise your hand, you know, ask the questions directly because the, the point is to, we want to make sure that every step is absolutely clear for you. Um, so here we go. So what I'm going to show, what I'm showing right now is actually the content that you will find on the challenge page for Antibiogo. Um, so first of all, the first point is who can participate? Um, so we are going to uh, prioritize uh, my, no, biologists who have already performed in the past AST, uh, antibiotic susceptibility test. Uh, but if you, all, if you haven't done it uh, and you're an experienced biologist and you have access to a biosafety level one laboratory, you are also eligible. Um, and uh, and if, you, if you apply, uh, then we probably have a small session with you uh, and Nada just to make sure that everything's clear for you. Um, then what's the objective you just heard about, uh, about it from NADA. Uh, the goal is really to focus on the BioRAD and the Oxoids uh, brand for the antibiotic disc so that uh, the Antibiogo app is able to recognize those, uh, those antibiotic discs better. Um, okay, so those are the main uh, steps to follow. First is you need to be able to uh, be a participant. You need first to actually create a project on Drogol and submit this project to this challenge. Um, and so it's that you will find in the, pro in the challenge page into programs, uh, sorry, projects, a model project here. This is a template for you to follow. It's very simple. Uh, and basically it's, you're going to indicate uh, who you are. So it's going to be associated with your profile on Drogo. Um, so I believe this is a page, right? So here is the, the, the project page. Um, so we will know who you are because this will be your uh, Drogo profile. Here you will be indicating, you would just you know, uh, basically say that, yeah, I agree with the, with the basic requirements um, of, the, um, of the challenge. And here you will indicate also uh, the antibiotic names that you will be focusing on. There will be a second step where you will be actually indicating, indicating this information. I'm just going to show it uh, next. But this is very important because it's by, uh, by submitting this project to the challenge that we will know that you want to participate. Um, so let's go back to um, the challenge page. Uh, so then you need to choose your antibiotic brand. So let's actually go uh, there. So here you will see that um, there is a whole list of antibiotic that has been pre-selected by the MSF Foundation. And so there is a link over here. If you click on it, you will arrive here. Um, and so you will have to choose at least six antibiotics uh, you can choose however you want, except that you need at least four of them to be in the priority list here, uh, like this one, for example. You will put your email. Um, you will then, uh, you know, indicate if you know already in advance uh, what kind of bacteria you're going to test those discs on. Um, so um, I'm going to go back on this just afterwards, but. Uh, Basically, you can use any non-pathogenic bacteria uh, except uh, bacteria that will come from human samples. Um, and you can, if you want, use um, even only a single bacteria for all your tests. It could be as simple as using an Escherichia coli, uh, a normal laboratory one that you that you know you, everybody uses uh, nowadays. That's that's going to work uh, very well. It doesn't need to have any antibiotic resistance, neither. Um, so, so let's say here, um, we would say, uh, if we take the example of, of Asia Shakuri, so uh, say here, if you know the, the, the subspecies, you can always you know, indicate it here, but I don't think it's uh, uh, absolutely necessary. Nada maybe actually can, can, can comment. Um, the bacterial origin here in that case, I would say if it comes from um, the lab, uh, probably would be quality control. Like, what would you say, Nada, for Isha Shakuri? If it's, if it's been like a, a standard strain that's been using for microbiology in the lab? 
for doing genetics, for example? Yeah, you can. <clears throat> sorry. Uh, normally, you should be you should be aware that it is a pathogenic or non pathogenic. Right. Yeah, is, is, this is a standard that Shashal Kohli that, uh, for example, people in biotechnology will be using to make transformations or cloning and stuff like that. So it's not. Yeah, so I would I would put either food and agriculture or. Yeah. Uh, or, yeah. Okay. So then, uh, if you're using the standard Shashal Kohli uh, bacteria, you put food and agriculture. Um, all right. And then once you have uh, the pictures, I will come back to this list. Um, and um, so that's the step two. Uh, it's very important. You can choose more than six different antibiotics. Uh, you know, if you want to do more, you're free to do it. Um, then it's, you have to perform ASTs. So you can follow any standard protocol for ASTs. Uh, and uh, um, if you need to, uh, we'll be also providing um, the, the, the standard protocol of that the MSS Foundation is following but uh, it's not a requirement that you, you have to follow this one. Um, then we go to taking pictures. So uh, here we are explaining what is a good picture, what is a bad picture. Uh, what matters is contrast. Uh, and so everything is made so that uh, the algorithm is able to recognize the pictures efficiently. Um, so first is that you need to use a device which, which has at least 12 megapixels. So it could be a smartphone or any digital camera. Um, if possible, you need to use a black cardboard to put in the background to improve contrast. Um, and then you need to make sure that the whole Petri dish is included in the, in the, in the picture. Obviously, you need to adjust the focus to deactivate the flash, if possible, if there are any glares. Uh, and you know, like basic uh, good pictures uh, set up, uh, avoid direct light, etc. Um, then you need to upload your pictures to a shared drive. So before I go into this detail, um, um, I think I will go back to what we call special requirements. Um, so those are um, the um, like constraints that we ask you to follow uh, in order to uh, to be eligible. So first is that. Um, to use the standard AST gross medium, which is uh, the Mueller Hinton uh, gross medium. Uh, so that's, uh, that's a standard medium, uh, easy to find and use. Um, and also that, um, you, that you inoculate the plate uh, with uh, 0.5 Mac Farland of a pure culture. A pure culture. Um, so it's an indication of concentration. Uh, it's kind of like an OD if you want and uh, OD60, sorry, OD600. Um, and uh, the antibiotic brands, as I said before, Bioral and Oxoid, uh, the bacterial type, I've just said it before. The Petri dish size, um, it could be um, round Petri dishes, uh, 90, 90 millimeters standard. Uh, it could be larger ones uh, or squared one, as we've seen. Um, that's not a problem. Just make sure that um, you don't put too many antibiotic discs in one uh, Petri dish because uh, the importance is that the circles are going to be potentially separated from each other so that uh, the analysis is made, is made easier. Um, then uh, very important is when you choose an antibiotic, you need to produce 200 photos of each antibiotic. Uh, that means you, you will need to replicate that much plates per antibiotic. So obviously you don't have to use one antibiotic per plate, but let's say that uh, you put six antibiotics per plate, um, then you, that means that we have to, you, you will need 200 of those plates uh, and take a photo of each one. Uh, that's like the minimal requirement for the algorithm to be able to, uh, to make sense of the data. Um, if you want to do more, you can. Uh, that's, that's, not, uh, that's not a problem. Um, all right, so let's go back to, uh, to the pictures and how to upload uh, your pictures. So the way uh, we made things is uh, we have opened a shared drive. Uh, and uh, once you have been selected as a participant, uh, you will be sent an invitation to, uh, to a personal subfolder where you will be able to upload your pictures. Um, and so here is um, uh, the link to the, to the drive. So the, the drive by itself is readable. So you can consult 
freely uh, the data. I mean, this is open data, right? Um, but to be able to uh, upload uh, pictures, then uh, special, uh, special invitations will be sent to you. Um, then, uh, because this is a lot of pictures, we require, we, I mean, we recommend you that you upload your pictures, you know, not in one time, maybe like you can do it uh, um, a long time regularly. Um, and um, yeah, so that's, that's it for the, the Google Drive. If you have uh, any questions regarding this, don't hesitate to ask your questions either in the chat or after I, I just finished uh, this small introduction. And then, once you have uh, you know, done all your pictures, you go back to this file, uh, to this sheet, and you make sure that you indicate um, the link to your folder and here the number of pictures that you have taken for that specific antibiotic uh, with this specific bacteria. Um, and then finally, uh, a very important step is reimbursement. So um, we want uh, you know, make, to make sure that you don't have to pay from your own pocket uh, the consumer was you will be using to make these experiments. So um, we have calculated um, the average cost that is you know, it's going to, to cost you to make 200 pictures of uh, six post antibiotic. Um, and so the average is about 230 euros per set of 200 pictures, meaning like the uh, number of plays, uh, the cost of the antibiotic disease, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so once you have finished producing uh, your images, according to how many pictures you have taken of how many antibiotics, uh, for example, if you have taken, let's say 400 pictures of 12 antibiotics, then you will be sent 460 euros. Um, and that's it. And then the MSF Foundation will be able to use those data uh, and, and, and improve the algorithm. I'm sure at some point we'll be able to share uh, how, how improved the, the algorithm has been so that uh, you're aware of how your work has been impactful. And um, that's it. So I'm going to end the presentation right, right there. And that would be fantastic if um, you had any questions, they say, um, or any recommendations in terms of how can we make things clearer, for example, uh, for Barcelona. I have a ton of questions. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Go ahead, Eden. Okay. So um, my first question is, when you grow up the bacteria, do you have to grow them up in that MT media, or can you grow them in anything? Anything. Okay. Anything so I can I can grow if I have E. coli in the lab, I can grow up it, it up in LB. Yeah. But then it just has to be streaked on the MT plate. Yeah. Okay. And then do you have a preferred streaking procedure? You're giving us um, uh, this number. I forget what it was called. I've never heard of it before, but I guess it has something to do with OD600. Yeah. Um, it, my, my plan, yeah. My plan, yeah. Right. And, but then there's a swab. So yeah. I don't normally try to get lawns of bacteria in my work. I usually try to get single colonies. So if you could post a video on how to actually streak the plates to get a nice lawn, um, yeah. it might be helpful to people um, if, they, if they've never, you know, if they've never done this sort of assay before. Um, what was, there was a couple of other questions. Yeah, so we are not using the app at all. We're just submitting photographs and information. That's right. Okay. Not yet, okay. but it can be one of the challenges in the future. In fact, if you have so many uh, needs in terms of feedback for you, though, that, uh, yeah, they're in the future. Hopefully. And just maybe to come back to your question about the squeaking of the, the plates, uh, it's usually, and especially if you are not familiar with the ASD, uh, it's, so there are different types of streaking, but the simplest one would be the three-way. I, I will send the pictures and I will dish the pictures and it, it's quite clear. So you just have to turn each time your, your battery dish and, uh, and three-way uh, in order to ensure that you are covering everything. If you are not covering everything, it's fine also, because the most important, again, is the antibiotic. So 
um, I'm not going to say that if, if the bacteria does not grow, it's fine uh, because it's not because we are going to train the algorithm to detect the antibiotics and the bacteria. So the difference in terms of colors and it's quite important um, uh, also in terms of the detection of the antibiotics. Uh, I guess I'm not a specialist for that, but uh, so uh, but yeah, I will send the uh, pictures of the especially the scraping part to uh, Thomas and we can share this. Uh, uh, and don't hesitate if you have uh, any doubt or question when you are doing your ACE. We'll put this in the APK. Okay. Yeah. And another question is, it, it would be fun, you know, if, if I have some antibiotic resistant um, plasmids in bacteria to see how they would react to the antibiotic, but the bacteria sometimes are like fluorescent green or fluorescent red. Is that going to mess up the uh, the algorithm. <laughs> uh, yeah, it would be better to use a, 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 a normal uh, E. coli uh, without, bless you, without a fluorescence. Uh, that would be uh, the ideal scenario. Oh. Are you okay, Ellen? <laughs> Are you okay? Coughing. I was just coughing and I didn't want everybody to have to listen to me coughing. Um, no, I'm fine. <laughs> Hi, um, Thomas. Hi, Nada. Um, I was going to say that this is a really amazing um, solution to uh, uh, the problem of antibiotic resistance. Uh, however, I was going to ask that is the focus, uh, do you have a focus to um, the solution of this, or you are looking both at clinical settings and also the environmental um, uh, antibiotic resistance. Because I, I see the the focus most often when people do AST is is for clinical uh, interpretation. So I, I was thinking yeah. if the the focus is skewed towards uh, the clinic. Uh, yeah. My next question has to do with. I, my team and I in Ghana have been working on a project uh, to see how we can use uh, artificial intelligence to uh, identify uh, bacteria. And uh, also then we, we feed the antimicrobial resistance data into the same app, but that way it, it uses the algorithm to identify the isolate and also just give you the, the reporting based on the, the zone diameters that are keyed in. But when we did a pilot, one of the things we realized was that some of the uh, microbiologists and lab technicians mentioned to us that um, the antibiotics that are used across facilities, this speaking from the, the Ghanaian perspective, they mentioned that it is not the same across board. And I, I, and I assume we're going to have that across the, the various uh, countries or regions you want to test this. How are you going to overcome the challenge, the challenges of different laboratories using different antibiotics? Thank you. Thank you for the two questions. I really mean, very relevant. And yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm working on a project in, in Ghana, by the way. Like, so uh, yeah, good to, to see that we have uh, uh, our colleague from Ghana with us. Um, so the first question about the One Health approach. Um, in fact, we are a medical organization, a humanitarian medical organization. So our focus, of course, is to treat patients. So, but we know that the antimicrobial problem is is um, is broader than human, and it, we know that there is problem in use of antibiotics, especially colistin in um, in agriculture and farming. But as a priority first. Our focus is the clinical part and the medical part, but there, there are some brainstorming, but this would be more in the long term in order to include maybe some um, um, vet microbiology in order to participate to the global effort of surveillance for antimicrobial resistance and to, to fit in the One Health approach, but that's not for, for the moment. Uh, the second question uh, regarding AI and I don't find bacteria, like that's, that's an, an amazing uh, idea. And uh, if it's using like um, a microscope, it's, uh, it's, uh, I think if we resolve problems, the gram staining and the presumptive identification of bacteria by using gram and AI, this would be 
uh, amazing. And by the way, you can contact the MSF Foundation if you want to present your project because we would be very interesting also to hear about those projects and, and maybe, I don't know, in the future to, to support those type of projects. I agree with you about uh, the different type of antibiotics that are used. Especially, it's not the the type of antibiotic because if you look to the antibiotic market and the microbiology um, market, unfortunately, there is a, there are five six big companies uh, that uh, have the monopoly on the antibiotic risk. And so our priority at this first stage is to focus on those big companies, um, and that we know that we we can find. Uh, uh, um, Anyway, then the idea would be, of course, more will have uh, people and laboratories using the app, more we can uh, collect uh, additional data on antibiotic risk, and then we can also uh, um, support uh, our algorithm. But for the moment, we decided to focus on five antibiotics, which we consider as um, like being the, the big branch of microbiology worldwide. Did I answer to your question? Harry? Sorry. Yeah. Did I answer to your question? Yeah, that, that is that, that that is very well understood. Thank you. Yeah, thank you too for the response. Thank you. Um Fantastic. Do we have any more questions? Uh, if not, I think that means that we may actually have done a good job explaining what are the requirements. I, I, I was wondering if uh, it would be possible to get like, a, I don't know, maybe YouTube or some kind of video that goes to the whole, uh, whole protocol from, from, zero, from A to Z, one example. That would be very useful for every participant, I think. Uh, I wonder if there isn't one online, if it's a standard test, you know? Yeah, there, there are. Yeah, there are. The thing is, I can share the, the MSF one because it's a simple one that really was used to train people who never uh, ex worked in the microbiology uh, lab. Uh, you don't have to follow it like uh, strictly, but uh, uh, the way that it's, uh, it's explained, I think it, it's, it's quite straightforward. So we can share this with you. Yeah, that would be great because yeah. I mean, you know, you have lots of people that do molecular biology, but uh, not necessarily doing uh, this this type of test. Sure. And uh, yeah, it's it's a good place to start with, and also, you know, maybe people are going to say, "Well, oh, I understand what I have to do. I cannot do it, or I cannot even do it." Yeah. Things like that. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah, Nada, I was going to just uh, say that I've had experience uh, doing some of these tests before. Uh, because of my past uh, training as a, a medical lab scientist. So uh, I think with a streaking, it is uh, similar to what we see in molecular biology where, when you are doing uh, competent cell and also just trying to streak out cells. Uh, but one of the things that they do at this point usually is to just use uh, a swap stick, usually a cotton bud uh, swap stick, which is used in seeding the plates in such a way that you uh, seed the entire plate with your uh, bacterial uh, culture, which is around the, the McFarland standard OD, which you can obviously you, uh, get the OD using the, the, the normal uh, calorimeter if you do not have the McFarland standard. Um, so I, I think usually there's no straight rule to it, but it's, it's more of a technique than um, uh, like something which is more written, more. Yeah, so that, that is what I want to say with regards to that. But I haven't seen what uh, the NSF or MSF uh, has, so I would, it would be great to have a look at it. Yeah, we will share it in the, in the challenge page. Yeah. Do we have any more questions or remarks? Well, I guess let's, um, let's call it for today. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us and, uh, and uh, giving uh, your feedback. Uh, We're going to take them into account to improve the, the description of the challenge and the program. Um, and um, you can already start actually um, well, applying for participation. Uh, and uh, we'll see you on Drogo. Thank you. Thank you again to Nada. Thank you very much, guys.
and looking forward to see the the, the results and, and and to give you also feedback on uh, on the inspire you go and uh, so uh, yeah please invite us next time also awesome thank you bye bye thank you guys bye <laughs> bye